Good afternoon. Um, so we're going to talk about a concept, food for people, fuel for planet. Uh, when you see this uh, photograph on the slide and on the t-shirt, um, what's the first, uh, what's the first word that comes to your mind uh, by, by looking at bananas? Fruit, food, nourishment, what we're going to talk about is really uh, an idea that encapsulates uh, an ecosystem which enhances or which facilitates providing nourishing food, but more importantly, also taking care of its disposal to ensure that it is safe for the environment and for the humans. Bananas is the powerhouse of energy. We all relate to this. Uh, we all have experienced this maybe out on a run in the morning, after a workout, during a game. I remember uh, picking up bananas from a fruit site vendor uh, when going in between sales, sales calls. It's an instant nourishment, instant energy, and so is the case with so many other fruits, vegetables, food that we consume. But once we have consumed that food, there is some part of it which is called waste or refuse that is inevitable. For example, when you uh, consume a banana, it is bound to create some waste. Can humans consume the peel? It would have been great because then there would have been no need for any processing or no need for any uh, challenges that come out from food waste. But unfortunately, humans can't consume uh, a banana peel, and so we can't consume many other things from the food system, uh, be it uh, cooked food, uh, processed food, or raw food like vegetables, etc., that we consume. What this leads is, uh, you know, either we call it refuse, waste. Is it really as useless, or is there a way we can transform? Uh, this to being an untapped treasure. Organic matter in food, which is very high, it is, uh, it's got solids, it's got uh, moisture, very apt to rot very quickly and rotting will lead to severe other, several other problems, including the problem of odor, groundwater pollution, air pollution, etc. For a second, just consider the fact that we just had uh, delicious food and the food was on our plate and we consume that happily savoring the taste and knowing that this is the food that's going to give us the fuel or the energy in our body to carry on with our daily activities. But the moment a little bit of surplus food from our own plate is put into a bin, would we even think about putting our hand back into the bin and pulling that food which was on our plate out to consume it again? That still has energy. And that is still food, but the moment it goes into a bin is called refuse or waste. And that waste, which just a couple of minutes ago was appealing to all five sensories, delightful to look at, a wonderful fragrance, of course, lovely taste. We often eat with our own hands. Um, but the moment it goes into the bin, that appeal turns into a negative appeal for all five sensories. When we're walking past on the road, if there's a heap of garbage, neither do we want to look at it, definitely don't want to touch it. Um, we don't want to hear the sounds that come from heaps of garbage, which is rats, rodents, which is obviously feasting, or the stray animals, which are feasting on this food. So the enormity of, of this, if you were to consider and look at, Um, just three examples, you know, of, of big cities in India. And what really happens uh, when this waste is disposed unscientifically is it is uh, emission of methane and carbon dioxide into the air. And obviously, as it rots the pollution into the groundwater, soil, etc. Now, the question is, what has this got to do with the fuel needs of the country? So, let's park the food waste and its problems at a point and look at another challenge which as a nation, uh, India in specific and the world in general will face, which is our fuel needs. So 
uh, when you're talking about uh, fuel needs, uh, we are looking at liquid fuel, we are looking at gaseous fuels. Today, 18% of our total energy uh, is consumed by just one sector, which is transport. And that is second only to industry. Within this transport, a huge, humongous percentage is consumed by fuel, uh, which, is, which is drilled from the ground or from natural sources. And in India in specific, 70% of that is imported. So not only we have an environmental uh, challenge at hand, we also have a financial challenge at hand because our growing demands for fuel um, is only going to push us closer to, uh, you know, more burden on our uh, foreign exchequer, right? These are fuels which are imported. So India's fuel needs are growing um, um, and there is a rapid expansion of infrastructure for these fuels to reach the farthest corners of our country, which the government is very rightly so investing in that infrastructure so that there is an upliftment of industry and, uh, uh, you know, citizen needs across the country. So when you look at uh, this fuel need and we, and we see that we also saw the challenges uh, with regard to a food waste disposal, is there a way that this uh, bane of the society which is the waste from food. And this food waste is only going to increase as we make commercial progress, as we make social progress. Uh, the unfortunate part is as there is more education, as there is more uh, uh, economic prosperity, so it, in, it also leads directly to increase in waste. So waste is going to be an ever increasing uh, uh, challenge and, and fuel is going to be the ever, in, ever increasing need. Is there a bridge that this food waste can be turned from the villainous role that it currently face that it shows to being a hero uh, to help us survive uh, the needs from the fuel? And this is exactly where the bridge of technology, which is called anaerobic digestion. It's a very stable, you know, uh, a proven technology that converts uh, the solids in food uh, extract that and convert that into gases, exactly what happens in our own digestive system. This is called biogas and biogas when purified to 95% methane purity is now called uh, CBG, compressed biogas. When gas at 95% methane purity is compressed and put into cylinders or transported to a customer, it is good to replace a wide range of fossil fuels that includes diesel, CNG, uh, even generate electricity or used for even direct combustion in factories uh, to replace LPG or diesel that could be used. So if this loop uh, can be really closed, and which is what we are doing uh, passionately over the past so many years in Pune and building another one in Bangalore. So what it does is, uh, you know, the, on the right what you see is the biodigester, that's the plant that processes 300 tons of food waste in Pune. This, this food waste is today fueling uh, uh, public transport, uh, private vehicles, etc. Storage in cylinders, which is safe for transport, so transporting from the processing plant to the point of consumption, which is also within the city. Retail outlets, uh, wherever you drive into a CNG car, today there are uh, regulations that allow CNG cars to fuel on compressed biogas, which is made from food waste. And of course, the joy of, uh, of public transport of the city uh, fueling on the waste or the gas made from the waste of the same city. So in a way, uh, when you look at this, this is a proven technology. It doesn't require too much to put this gas into grids or to put it into cylinders to take it to customers. Uh, twin climatic impact that it creates uh, a raw material, which is waste. Uh, reduces the chances of pollution and environment uh, degeneration when it is processed scientifically. So you are creating a, a positive uh, environmental impact on the input side and the output, which is the gaseous product, goes and replaces a range of fossil fuels, which is again another climatic impact. All this while keeping in mind that the waste is generated in cities. The gas is produced closed to where it is getting consumed 
and wherever there is consumption will lead to further generation of waste. So, it is the best or the uh, a most concrete demonstration of a circular economy working for the cities to, to make these cities more resilient, more sustainable for the future. So, just going back to where we started from uh, the simple, noble, humble banana and taking inspiration from banana as an example, but really uh, in this point banana is an example or banana is uh, uh, you know an example of the entire food chain that we are talking about and just look all other food that nourishes people can also be an unassuming savior and supplier for fuel for our planet and for our country. And by promoting these principles of a closed loop uh, system, the aim is to really create a food system that not only provides nutritious and affordable food to people, but also minimizes its negative impact on the planet's ecosystem and, and the climate. So, in this age of uh, transcendence, a uh, continuous movement where society is evolving uh, beyond uh, the set norms and the set standards. This will throw open uh, unconventional opportunities and never before thought interventions. What we just spoke about is one example of that and the secret of this change is to focus all our energy not on fighting the old, but to building the new. To conclude, in the very famous words of G.B. Shaw, George Bernard Shaw, now that we have learned to fly in the sky like birds and to dive in the sea like fish. Only one thing remains to live on earth like humans. Let us go bananas. Thank you.